Essential parameters for management of CKD in general are blood cell counts. We will now explain to you the impact of low counts of red blood cells and hemoglobin, summarized as renal anemia. We will give you information on its impact on progression of CKD and functionality and how to manage, especially in older patients with chronic kidney disease. Anemia is defined as hemoglobin levels lower than 30 grams per deciliter for men and 12 grams per deciliter for women. We know that with each decade of life, the levels of hemoglobin are decreasing. However, this decrease may not be considered as a physiological aging process. But given this fact, we know that the prevalence of anemia in older patients is rather high, ranking from 10 to 45% of community-dwelling older citizens. We further know that it's more prevalent in men and that it has a huge impact on mortality, morbidity and cognitive and physical capacity of older people. The factors contributing to anemia, especially in chronic kidney disease, are various. First, decreased production of erythropoietin, a hormone that is released by kidneys and is needed to form hemoglobin, is decreasing. Iron deficiency due to either blood loss or decreased absorption of iron through the bowel also contributes to the development of anemia in old age and chronic kidney disease. Decreased bone marrow activity or ostitis fibrosis cystica also contribute or support the process of the development of anemia. Vitamins that are also necessary to form hemoglobin such as vitamin B12 or folate, are also resorbed to a lower extent via the bowel. When chronic kidney disease is present, uremic inhibitors are released, inflammatory response is increased, and this causes high levels of hapsidin, which altogether also contributes to the development of anemia in old age. Iron is the element in the center of the development of anemia in old age. Iron is usually absorbed via food in the duodenum and then transported in plasma via transferrin. You, it may either be stored in the muscle or in the liver or it may be used immediately to form hemoglobin and erythrocytes. What are the specific considerations when dealing with older people and chronic kidney disease? Well, anemia is highly prevalent, as I've told you, and it's highly associated with multimorbidity and polypharmacy. The problem in daily clinical practice is that the symptoms of anemia are rather unspecific in older people, but the consequences are severe, as we have heard. In daily clinical practice, red blood cell counts are not reliable markers to diagnose anemia, so you have to go for hemoglobin and iron status when treating older people with chronic kidney disease. The problem is that anemia impacts quality of life of older people and needs to be treated to maintain capacity. We know that in the geriatric patients, anemia is closely correlated with depression and the mission to hospital as well as mortality. Especially in women with cardiovascular disease, we know that the impact of Concurring anemia is rather high, raising mortality and morbidity of these patients. Finally, the association between the number of red blood cells and hemoglobin and the cognitive performance is high. Well, how to substitute iron is the question now. The first line would be to give it with food. But to substitute iron, you would need to eat large amounts of poultry or liver. So in daily clinical practice, we usually prescribe drugs orally to substitute iron. The problem with this is the adherence of older people because those drugs induce constipation and older people do not like to adhere to those drug regimens. So more and more geriatricians tend to substitute iron intravenously. In severe cases or in adverse events, you may also consider to give blood transfusions. Well, when to choose what? This strongly depends on the condition of your patient and the amount of iron needed. If you just need to substitute a small amount of iron and your patient is doing quite well, you have the time to administer orally. 
In case your patient is unstable, showing up with atypic signs and symptoms, and the amount of iron to be substituted is rather high, then you consider to give the iron intravenously. For further reading and information, we have added two guidelines on the iMOOCs platform during this course. The one is released by the European Renal Association and the other one by the National Kidney Foundation.